Okay, so we know Brian Johnson's play calling has been less than ideal. However, Jalen Hurts responded to the recent criticism while defending his first year OC. Does he have a point? Plus, Shaq Leonard made it through waivers and can sign with any team. So was Sirianni hinting at it during his presser and why Howie should consider it? And the Eagles are getting more hate. What else is new? But first, let's run it. Hey guys, I just gotta start by saying thank you. It's crazy that the channel just surpassed 30,000 subscribers in nine months of starting. So of course, I've gotta do a massive giveaway to show my appreciation. So here's what we're gonna do. Make sure you're subscribed and then go comment what you think the score will be against the Bills on Sunday, as well as entering the total passing yards Jalen Hurts will end with. And if you get it right, I'll send you two tickets to the Birds game versus the 40 Winers. As always, if we have ties, I'll end up doing a drawing. Oh, by the way, if no one wins, then I'll pick the closest prediction to send some Kelly Green merch to. Because it's Kelly Green week, and obviously, those of you who follow the channel know it's unquestionably my favorite color combo. Plus, all the vintage logos will be back on the field this week, and right now, you can get your hands on the newly released starter jackets and fits. The only part I hate is that the Eagles are offering the new gear inside only at the pro shop and not online. But whatever, at least it's not like the hate that Nick Sirianni's been getting for his post-game celebrations mocking the Chiefs fans. <laughs> Well, apparently it's okay when one of their own trolls James Bradbury from the Super Bowl, like Juju Smith-Schuster, or releasing a milk called Eagles Tears after the Super Bowl. Yet when Sirianni does it, the Chiefs can't stand it, like linebacker Willie Gay who responded to the video saying, that dude is corny as a MF'er. Well, well, well. How the turntables... Honestly, I don't have a problem with it. It's called the spoils of victory. Because I love the fire and passion Sirianni has for the squad, but, you know, some people hate him and can't stand the HC. Although recently released linebacker Shaq Leonard is a big fan of Sirianni. Since, remember, the two have a former connection when the Eagles head coach was the Colts OC for three seasons. And Thomas Mott did a great breakdown of the potential impact and the reasons for considering Leonard, so check out the link in the video here. But basically, since Shaq wasn't claimed through waivers due to his massive contract that nobody wanted to inherit, he's now free to sign with whoever, meaning most likely a contender for the league minimum. However, if you're really interested in the 28-year-old four-time All-Pro, there's a potential concern that the Dallas Cowboys might steal him away. And honestly, they need a linebacker more than we do, after having lost starter Leighton Van Der Esch to a season-ending injury. But I agree with Thomas that Howie previously showed interest in linebacker Anthony Barr, so if you made this type of signing, it's really only for a depth addition, since Leonard's not coming in and starting, especially the way Cunningham and Morrow are playing right now. Although the way Sirianni talked about other vets today makes you wonder if he's hinting at Shaq. I think what Howie and his staff have done an unbelievable job of is is not only getting good players that can help us, but good people that fit into the locker room. But that's also, right, and so we, we get these guys like Roby and, and, and Kevin Byard that, that have come in, Julio, that have come in, and, like, these are top-notch pros as far as, as players, but they're also really good teammates as well. And so that's the, you know, that's how we doing, Howie and his staff doing the homework of, Hey, this is the, this is the right type of guy to bring in here right now, and it, where there's a where there's a need, and um, and then make no mistake about it, it's a it's a. Uh, it's a reflection of how our locker room it currently is. Okay, personally, I'd love to have Leonard come in given his mindset and leadership, and I'm sure how he's at least making a call with reports suggesting Leonard will meet with teams to find a potential suitor. But how about you guys? Are you in or out on the duo being potentially reunited in Philly? Personally, I don't hate it. Yet speaking of that hate, the media continues to bash the birds with Dan Orlovsky going on the Pat McAfee show and saying, I walk away from that game thinking the Chiefs are the better football team than the Eagles. The Chiefs completely outplayed them in so many areas, except for Pat's INT, Kelsey's fumble, and five drops, which isn't going to happen often. I bank on them making those in the playoffs. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Seriously? Like, what the heck? We're just gonna try to explain away Mahomes' INT like Bayer didn't play a significant factor or deserve any credit, and the same for Bradley Roby making a heads-up play to punch the ball out? I mean, I get that those things don't happen often, but it's because the Chiefs don't play a team like the Eagles every week, which is why I certainly agree with Colin Cowherd's take over Orlovsky's. I've watched every Eagles game this year, and they all look like that. It's not luck. It's their identity. The great teams win imperfectly. 
and nobody does it like the Eagles. Thank you. I've been trying to say it, and we've all been trying to say it, but the Eagles deserve a lot more credit. Well, everyone except for Brian Johnson, that is. Judging by some of y'all's comments, like, absolutely sick of horrible, horrible play calling, and BG needs to be fired, his situational play calling really sucks, which Sirianni would disagree with that notion, but more on that in a sec. But also, we win in spite of Johnson, not because of him. But at least it can't get any worse. How can they get any worse? Take a look around you, Ellen. We're at the threshold of hell. <laughs> All right, look, I'm with you that BJ's left a lot to be desired. And while stats-wise, it may look like he's in the same category of Shane Steichen, he's been brutal situationally. Yet Sirianni would completely disagree with that notion. I just think he's got a good feel. Like, Brian's not going to just do something to do it. He's got a good feel and good flow for what's going on in the game um, and at being able to, to adjust in the game. He's really smart situationally. And, and when I talk about situational football, th these things pop up everywhere. Third down, red zone, two minute, backed up, uh, you know, third down and backed up, four minute, four minute, ba uh, four minute backed up, four minute, third down. Like the end, they're endless. And he's, you know, he's just done an unbelievable job in those scenarios of, you know, the preparation that we put in for it. But, you know, and we do all that preparation in that uh, in that together. But then there's there's going to be an art to it of like, OK, well, this is what we planned on doing, but this is what the play requires right now because of the way the defense is. So I think he does a great job adjusting, does a great job uh, in game, um, you know, having to feel for the situations. Um, is going to do what we feel like is best to to do to to win that game, and that doesn't necessarily that can mean run it a ton, it can mean throw it a ton, um, and that can be mix. And so uh, again, just like I said, I just feel like you know as you look at our statistics and and what we and and the feel of games, I just think he's done a really good job, and probably hasn't been talked enough about of how good of a job he's he's done based off of like. I think there was an expectation coming in like, oh, um, we lost our coordinator, we're going to take a step back, and that's really not been the case. And we have the same record as we had last year, and to me, Brian deserves a lot of credit for that and should be t being talked about more in that light of – Man, this guy's doing a really good job. Okay, I know Sirianni's going to defend his guys until the bitter end, which I'm okay with and respect, but surely he can't actually believe Johnson's in the same league as Steichen. Of course, I should point out that Steichen didn't necessarily set the world on fire when he first took over, yet believe you me, BJ deserves the blame for a number of calls. And okay, maybe Sirianni does too, since he's mentioned at times it was his decision, but personally, I think that's just Nick falling on the sword for his first year OC. Whatever the case, QB1 is tired of that talk and defended his offensive coordinator over the recent criticism. I know my, my 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 take on it is uh never getting too high, never getting too low. Keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, focus on your 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 preparation and, and the things that are important to you. You know, and knowing knowing him for a long time, I, I know what type of person he is. He was the OC at Utah at the age of 23, 24, I think. You know, so he's he's been doing this um, a very long time and. He has a when we talk about being talk about some someone that's rare in rare company, he's he's done this and he's been kind of one of a kind in it in a sense of just a, the the experience and the route that he's taken to get to where he is now. Um it's it's very unprecedented for someone to start off that young, um, and then just to work their way up and obviously had the opportunity he has now, so you know, he's doing, a, he's doing a great job with it, um, and we just continue to grow, all of us. I don't know. I certainly wouldn't say BJ's been stellar, but I'm also not ready to fire the guy. I mean, come on, we're 9-1, and one, and as Jalen always says, let's keep the main thing the main thing. Now, I'm with you for all of those that say Jalen and the playmakers are the ones making the OC look good. For example, the plays when Hurts audibles from something BJ called, which is more than necessary at times. It's, it's pure instinct. It's pure instinct, um, and it's... It's, it's honestly preparation um, as well, combining the two. Um, you know, I understand that there, are, you know, you, you, that there are different ways to play the position and different ways to play the game. Um, and I embrace all of the ways that I play the game. And <clears throat> I just think as I, I try to, to climb as a player and as a leader, um, I just want to better that. 
and, and be the best version of myself. Well, hey, maybe he can turn this into a Peyton Manning situation where he's basically going to change the play every single down anyway, and then it won't even matter. But getting back to what Jalen was saying, sure, BJ hasn't been all bad, I guess. I mean, I think you got to give him a little credit for setting up a couple plays that worked later in the game, like the jet sweep, or as much as I hate to say it, and the play call that I really don't enjoy most of the time, the QB draw that scored against the Blitz was perfect timing. It's just that we see too often decisions to be extra conservative that there's just no way to explain it. Of course, I've seen comments saying Brian Johnson was promoted too early and he's not ready for the OC job, and maybe so because that was the knock on him when he was at Utah, with Utah head coach Kyle Whittingham admitting he moved BJ into the OC role too early and probably should have waited. But this is 11 years later. Surely that's not the question of being too early anymore. And shouldn't we trust the guy who's in it every day with him? I don't know. If it's good enough for Jalen, then it's good enough for me. At the same time, I know this has been a constant theme with Bleeding Green Nation writing an opinion article entitled, Firing Brian Johnson Isn't the Answer while adding a poll of which option is more likely between BJ improving as he settles into the role or a mid-season change to fix the offense. And I'd say I'm still in that category of believing things will slowly get better, which is why I'll say realistically, we're not going to see a change. It's the end justifies the means and we're nine and one. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. Oh, by the way, I think we should also give at least a little credit to the Chiefs defense for causing some frustration and mistakes, since after all, that was the best defense we've played all season. I don't know, call me crazy, but I'm not at DEFCON 1. Honestly, probably like DEFCON 3 right now. All right, hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll probably be off for the next week since I'll be on vacation with a fan, but we'll jump on if there's anything breaking or anything like that. Until next time, this has been the Philly Special.